Well, good afternoon, and we're laboring on Labor Day, so we'll go ahead and get started. A couple comments on uh, uh, last Saturday night or Sunday's game, however you want to term it. Uh, first of all, what became apparent to me, uh, some improvements, um, team speed on defense uh, became apparent. Um, I thought our kick coverage units uh, and more speed there. Also, some return men that have some uh, some really good speed. Our offensive line did a good job as far as uh, protecting uh, Josh and uh, moving the line of scrimmage. So pleased about that. At the playmaking ability by our senior receivers, Tanner Gentry, Jake Mulhart was excellent. And then the big unknown was just how Josh was going to be res going to be respond and. You know, a lot of the things that he did with his legs and his arm, I thought he, we thought he got better as the game uh, went along, particularly with his reads and some of his deliveries and decisions. But we're really pleased uh, uh, with, uh, with Josh, then the unknown factor of our kicker, and uh, particularly early. Um, you know, I thought we, uh, Cooper did a nice job. Uh, he missed a couple, but he drilled a couple. He drilled one, which we thought was going to be a game-winning one, but it was ruled as a timeout. So a uh, good start there, but uh, certainly areas of improvement. Always as a coach, you, it's never as good as you thought. Um, some areas where we certainly need to improve. Um, <clears throat> you know, we thought right away um, uh, too many uh, yards on defense, miss assignments, things like that, way too many yards. We've got to clean that up. Um, next thing we need to do is uh, um, get off the field on a, on a last drive. Need to credit Northern Illinois, and they had a fifth-year starting quarterback and some capable receivers. But we've got to do a better job closing the game out there. On the flip side, we've got to close out uh, drives uh, at the end of the game. Uh, you know, there was two two times where either we've got to score or in in the clock uh, with the long drive, and we weren't able to do that. Um, so uh, some improvements there. Um, we are healthy for the Nebraska game, which is encouraging. Uh, a good talk with our trainer and uh, had a meeting with our players this morning and they've got a great look in their eyes so we're excited about moving forward concerning Nebraska I think uh, when you first uh, look at them um, on offense I think you really need to, to uh, uh, really address uh, Tommy Armstrong he's a guy that can throw the ball a country mile uh, he's got excellent mobility he's strong he's played a lot of uh, snaps at quarterback been very successful and then the next group is Wide receivers, uh, certainly Westerkamp is a guy who's uh, played a lot of football, made a lot of plays. We're particularly also impressed with Alonzo Moore. Uh, you know, he had a big touchdown reception. He's a guy that you'd look at and say he'd be a great jet sweep guy, um, really athletic guy. I know he's a quarterback out of high school. So a really good group of wide receivers. Uh, when Tommy throws the ball up uh, to him, they, they do a great job coming down to it. Big offensive line. Get man on man, they stay on their feet, they do a good job protecting. Over on the defensive side, uh, you know, big strong defensive line as we watched the Fresno game, not a lot of uh, uh, push there. Uh, they were able to establish the line of scrimmage and push the pocket. Uh, some disciplined linebackers, we think their corners really have excellent speed, and uh, we know that Gary's uh, going to be back, at least we're assuming Gary's going to be back. He, he was suspended for a game. Their team captain was suspended for a game. I, I don't know what the reason was, but uh, we're assuming that he'll be back. Uh, special teams, uh, they, uh, you know, they, um, <clears throat> they allocate a full-time coach to special teams. And uh, so pretty, uh, pretty disciplined, explosive group with their coverage group. They have an excellent uh, place kicker, and I thought they handled their punting duties very well. So uh, they had a great performance against Fresno, who's in our conference. We know a lot about Fresno. So we got our hands full going over to Lincoln, playing a good uh, football team. Uh, at this time, questions from the audience. Coach, just that you, you Go ahead. Late, late night game, and obviously <laughs> win something like that is huge. You mentioned talking with your team this morning, they got a good look in their eyes. Do you worry about turning the page because of mm -hmm. such an emotional and even physical win going late at night? Do you, do you address that with them? Well, anytime you have a young football team, uh, and we did address it. You know, the thing we've got to do is uh, close the chapter. I talked to our team afterwards and said, you got a 24 hour rule. That 24 hour got shrank down. Um, you know, it's important for us to move forward. And 
you know, we went into that last game hungry. We'll need to make sure we go into this game hungry as well. So uh, we certainly addressed it. My sense is even though this football team is a, a young football team, they're pretty pretty doggone mature and focused for where they're at. So uh, I don't think we're going to have that issue, but, you know, I think it'd be a, a statement by a coach. Many coaches think they know 100% where this, their group's at, but um, you know, we did address that. Coach, just given your history, what does coaching against Nebraska mean to you personally? Really, it's not a, and I think any college coach will tell you it's about the players. And so you focus on the game at hand and you focus about our players here. And I'm um, excited about coaching these guys. It'll be a big challenge going over and playing a Big Ten team. You know, it's not about, this is a business trip, mm -hmm. but obviously you're from Lincoln, you know, you have a lot of history, personal and professional. Is that just for? off-season stuff you can go back and visit any time or is it, well, my, will it be special that way at not, all? Not really. It is a business trip. My parents still live there. I've got a daughter live there. But that's all, you know, as coaches, uh, you know, you travel around the profession. A lot of guys end up you, you're coaching at a different school than, than what you played at. And so uh, it really is a business trip. And like I said, it's about our players. Coach, how do you prepare your offense to play in front of such a large crowd? Do you filter in any uh, crowd noise during practice? Do you work on a sound like how? What are you going to have? Well, those are always challenges, uh, you know, and, um, you know, I know that that stadium uh, can be loud, and so uh, there's things we'll certainly have to do to prepare for that. Uh, but I want to make note of, I thought our students did a great job uh, Sunday morning here making some noise. Coach, even during fall camp, players kind of mentioned prepping for Northern Illinois, but also Nebraska. When you've got a big foe like this, do you kind of have to game plan a little further ahead than just game week? Well, we always look at a couple of opponents during fall camp, and I think that's pretty usual for most people. So, big ball game, and I know our guys will be ready. This will be a big day uh, for us as far as our preparation. Greg, I know that in their first game, that Nebraska really ran it a lot, didn't really throw it a lot, although you mentioned the, the skill guys and the weapons they have. You expect them to probably maybe air it out more, be a little more balanced against you. It seemed like they were pretty run-oriented in that game. Well, they certainly moved the ball. If you look at their UCLA game, they had great success on the ground. Uh, but that's not to detract from Tommy's ability to throw the ball deep. Um, I mean, they had uh, a big time uh, strike throwing the ball. He, he's got a real live arm. So, you know, it puts us in a real challenging position. Uh, anytime you're a defensive coordinator and you have a quarterback that's got one, the ability to throw, ability to run, and then you've got a big strong line uh, with a, a good group of, of running backs. And I failed to mention the running backs. Yeah, Newby and uh, Ozigbo, I think, are really good running backs, and they came uh, with a freshman named Bryant as the game went along. And so a lot of yards on the ground, and uh, we'll have to attack all those facets. You will be facing a dual threat quarterback from a defensive line perspective. Perspective, How do you kind of keep him contained in this game? Well, to do that, that's a challenge, to keep him contained, because uh, he is a, he's good in a, in a pocket situation, but I think he's extremely dangerous when he gets out on the corner, making plays with his legs or as being able to throw on the run. A lot of that comes down to being disciplined in your rush lanes, making sure that you are doing your job and not trying to do somebody else's job. And then you've got to have athleticism. Now, I was encouraged during the course of uh, the game. I noticed our defensive line. I thought there was better quickness and uh, you know more discipline than what we've had the last couple of years. But we'll need all that to, to put ourselves uh, in a good position Saturday. Coach, we talked about Josh Allen, I mean, last weekend. Great game. How important is that, especially for such a young quarterback, for his confidence and his psyche, not only going into this next game, but for the rest of the season? We thought during the course of the game he improved. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I know he played 13 plays the previous year, but that was over a year ago, so you didn't know how he was going to respond. Um, you know, there's got to be a, a feeling of not only his confidence, and Josh is confident. He's not cocky, but he's confident. But I think the rest of our football team recognizes. We've got a quarterback that, when he steps in the huddle one, really has a good understanding of what we're doing offensively, um, can make sure he's managing the game, but also has the ability to make some plays. If you look at the things that he did, um, many times he was, you know, there's a reason why also we had zero sacks. Our offensive line did a nice job, but he did a great job with his legs. Um, you know, he runs under 4 7. And, uh, and I think the last play was a play that, um, that was a pretty dynamic play, and it showed his uh, grit, determination, but also his, his uh, uh, ability.
ability. And so we think those things are going to serve him well and serve our team well. Craig, along the same lines with Josh, I know Gunslinger has yep. been thrown a lot with him. Mm -hmm. Are there times, though, when being a Gunslinger is a good thing? Yeah, when the play works. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, here's where Josh made some uh, – he, he, he did make uh, an error. We, he was picked off, mm -hmm. and uh, that was called back. And so, you know, he was forcing a throw. But I thought, you know, the, the touchdown that he ran, um, you know, that's a run-pass option. And, and I've seen him before come back and do an all I Brett Favre pass across the field. And he, he knew, okay, we're, we're deep in red zone territory here. I will, we kick a field goal, we're going to win the game. So let's take, you know, let's take care of the football. Now he did that with his legs, um, and so I thought he made some good, you know, a lot of good decisions during the game, and that was a good decision there. So, uh, yeah, we like the fact that he's aggressive and he's confident, and you know, quite frankly, there's some throws that he can throw uh, because of his. Uh, he's got a really quick release and the velocity on the ball. He can get the ball sometimes in places. That you normally go, I probably shouldn't throw that, but he's got that ability, so um, we appreciate that. Coach, how much of a test will it be for this team to just go on the road for the first time? Well, that's always a test, particularly for uh, young players, and then along with that, some of the veteran players, a new routine, new place, uh, different climate, all those things. Um, one of the things that was an advantage, though, about uh, some of the adversity that we had uh, last Saturday with all the rain delays and the type of game it was, those are things that really, they're a testament to your focus and belief and determination to kind of block out what sometimes would be some distractions or some adversity. So going on the road's tough. Um, you know, Memorial Stadium's a great place to play. I believe it's one of the top uh, college venues in the country. And so uh, some of our players have been there before. Um, and so that will be a test in itself as well. For the players who have been there, do you have them, you know, tell the other younger players anything about that experience back? Oh, I, I imagine they're going to probably talk in the locker room a little bit. But here's what I do know: once a game gets going, it's what goes on in between those lines. And uh, the, the good teams are able to focus on that. The teams that kind of focus on all the superficial things that are on the outside aren't the ones that are really going to be able to carry their assignments down. And that's what we're going to need to do, focus on the task at hand to have an opportunity to beat a good football team. Uh, I don't. I think there might be some, some people on the line. Keith Kelly, I think you're from Cheyenne. Are you on there? I guess Keith's not on the line. OK, anybody else? Hey, Craig, this is Rich Kipes from the Apple World Herald. How are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Hey, it sounds like you got a little, a little taste of C.J. Johnson in the spring. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask you what his progress has maybe been like since then and kind of what are your plans for him the rest of the season? Well, thanks for bringing C.J. up. You know, we, uh, C.J.'s had a, had a good spring, and he played uh, uh, some in the game, made a catch, and that's always um, important to do, kind of get uh, your first reception out of the way. Uh, C.J.'s a very gifted athlete. He's got great hand-eye coordination, and you'll see us in a great – him into our offense. Uh, we do have two senior uh, receivers who probably get the lion's share of the reps, but uh, CJ is a guy that you'll see out there. Uh, I'm sure he'll play some meaningful reps uh, in this Saturday's game. Okay, great follow up to that. Is, excuse me, getting him and maybe some other guys you've got from the state, is it a, kind of an indicator how you want to recruit this area going forward? Well, we've always felt like there's good football players in the state of Nebraska. And, and uh, what uh, we, what we did, Rich, uh, when we first got here, we, we went back and did a lot of research on when the Cowboys were really talented. And during that time, there was a strong presence of Nebraska high school players on the squad. And uh, when we first got here, there were zero players on our squad from the state of Nebraska. And so uh, you know, we had quite a few recruiting ties from the school that I was at prior. And so we opened those lines up, and, uh, and we've been fortunate. There are some guys on our football team that are from the state of Nebraska that we feel like can uh, give us an opportunity to win the Mountain West Conference during their tenure here. Thanks, Greg. You bet, Rich. Anybody else on the line? This is Cody Nagel from the World Herald. Uh -huh. uh, what kind of progress has, has Andrew made after, after a stellar uh, freshman season? You're referring to Andrew Wingard? 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, Andrew, we believe, is uh, uh, he, he was noted uh, by a lot of our peers as being an all-conference player coming into his second year. I thought he played really well Saturday night. He was a leading tackler. And, uh, sometimes you, you don't want that, but many times a good player is going to be around the football. That's not to say that he's a super aggressive run-only guy. Uh, Andrew, was, uh, he's got great speed, and uh, he's got the ability to, to read and diagnose. He's an aggressive player, and uh, there's a huge upside for him. He plays the game with great passion, and uh, what we saw in the game uh, Saturday against a complicated offense was his ability to make decisions be in the right spot and to make plays. And so uh, there's a bright future for Andrew Winger, and uh, he played well um, Saturday night with a, without question, and he'll need to, to play well against uh, Nebraska Saturday to, to give us a, an opportunity to win.